Okay, guys, good afternoon. Um, I am Kaylee. I'm with the North Dakota Primary Care Office, um, and I'm really excited to be joined by the Job Service uh, North Dakota team. And so we've asked Job Service to come on and kind of um, share in the latest um, trends and tools in recruiting um, your next employee. So super excited to, to have the team here with us. Just wanted to give you some quick updates here from the, the Primary Care Office. Um, if you're not aware, uh, we have a few loan repayment programs that will be opening here in December. Um, these are geared towards healthcare professionals working in health professional shortage areas. Um, so I would encourage you to, to stop over on the North Dakota Primary Care Office website to learn more. Um, and I'm available anytime if you guys have questions. My email is in, in on the website, so feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email. Otherwise, I'll hand it over to Phil uh, so he can introduce his team and get ready to start sharing. All right. Well, a good early afternoon to some and good uh, late morning to others, especially those uh, from the mountain time zone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we appreciate it. I hope you, uh, you know, learn a little bit of what job services, what kind of tools that we have available um, to you to recruit that next employee. Um, I first want to start by saying uh, thanks for what all of you do. Thanks for the tremendous work that you've been doing over the last three years and taking care of all of us and our families. Um, we truly appreciate that. Um, like Kaylee said, uh, my name is Phil Davis. I'm the Workforce Service Director here at Job Service North Dakota. Uh, I want to uh, just introduce my team real quick. Um, from Fargo, we have Julie Rosberg. From uh, Williston, we have Miss Fran Zare. And from Dickinson, we have uh, Amy Kobosh. And from Bismarck, we have uh, Michaela Thomas. Also, a special guest we have with us is our executive director, Pat Bertinoli. Um, Pat has been our director for about eight months now, so uh, you'll hear from Pat at, at the end. Um, so we'll just start, um, just a quick uh, overview here of uh, what we're going to uh, talk about. I'm going to just, you know, talk a little bit about job service, who we are, what we do, uh, give you some workforce statistics. Uh, from there, I'll turn it over to Fran and Julie, talk about uh, our website and give you a little demonstration there. Um, Amy will uh, start off then with uh, some labor market information, kind of some wages, um, what's going on with the labor market, openings, that sort of thing. Uh, from there, Michaela will talk about job fairs, hiring events, and our rural outreach that we do. And then, like I just said, Pat will give us uh, some closing remarks. And then uh, we'll open up for some questions. But during that time, or during this time, I should say, if you do have some questions, you can put them in the chat and uh, we'll take them from there. So uh, Job Service North Dakota, who are we? Well, um, we are a federally funded state administered agency. We are about 98 to 99% federally funded. Uh, we work off of three primary federal grants. Uh, one, if you never heard of it, Wagner Pizer, and then uh, WIOA, the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, and, uh, and then of course our unemployment, um, uh, our unemployment uh, grant that, that we use also. Um, you know, we have nine workforce centers across the state. And my next slide, I'll show you a little bit of a map about that and talk about that. But do we do believe we're the regional workforce experts. Uh, we have star, strong partners with employers, uh, schools, colleges, our local EDCs and chambers, uh, many of us, and to include the ladies here that you'll meet uh, shortly, uh, sit on their boards. Uh, we have strong uh, government partners, workforce partners, such as Volk Rehab, Adult Education, uh, Department of Corrections. And of course, we have strong partnerships on the local level, county level. Um, we believe we're knowledgeable of all the communities uh, that we work in and live in. Uh, we know about the current events. We know what's going on with our resources and the local economy. So again, we do believe we're the regional workforce experts and we're not bragging when we say that. We're just, we're just out there, getting out there to know all of you. So what do we do? Well, you probably heard a little bit about you know, uh, employers and job seekers and taking advantage of um, our website, jobsinde.com. And I know Fran and, and Julie are going to talk a little bit of, about that. Um, one of the biggest things that we do that a lot of people don't know about is we remove barriers to employment for individuals that are struggling uh, to get into employment or maybe to upskill a little bit. Um, those barriers could consist of uh, maybe they're homeless, uh, maybe they're underemployed, maybe they have some type of criminal history. So we take those individuals, we case manage them, um, maybe they need to go back to and, and earn their GED. From there, uh, we try to find some type of short-term training. Um, our leading occupations where we send people to short-term training are uh, certified nursing assistant, welders, and CDL, uh, commercial driver's license. Um, 
through that program, we send almost 600 people uh, through training and into the workforce each year. So again, if you're not familiar with your current uh, or with your local workforce center, um, I challenge each of you uh, to, to get to know those folks. And we'll share that in a little bit also. Um, you might have heard a little bit during COVID what we're doing with the unemployment insurance program. Uh, yes, we do execute that program here uh, during, uh, and I'll cover that in a little bit also, but um, just a little bit about unemployment. Um, during COVID, we uh, processed 260,000 claims over that 18 month period, starting in about April 2000 and uh, we paid out $1.2 billion, uh, yep, $1.2 billion in unemployment claims. Um, and that, you know, ran, went obviously right into our economy um, because it was struggling during that time. And of course, another thing that we do is we provide labor market information and Amy's going to kind of give you a rundown on that. So here's a little map about uh, where our workforce centers are located. You can see we're on the corridors of Highway 2 and I-94 and of course I-29. Um, another item that we do, we're pretty proud of, is not only uh, our services we provide in the uh, nine workforce centers, but we also like, uh, well, lack of better words, we take our show on in on the road. Uh, we also visit 25 rural um, cities, rural areas across the state, and we do that once a month. Um, and Michaela's going to talk a little bit about that, but you can find that on our website, jobsnd.com also. So we've been in the news a little bit with our unemployment here in the state, a good, great state of North Dakota. Um, currently, we're sitting at 1.7% unemployment. Um, we are below pre-pandemic levels. I don't think we've seen this uh, low of a rate probably since 2017, 2018. Uh, if you look in the northwest corner of the state on that uh, map there, uh, up in Divide County, we're actually 0.8% unemployment. Our highest county in the state is uh, Roulette, and they're at 5.5%. Now, if you've ever listened to an economist uh, talk about the economy and what should be happening with it, um, a good solid unemployment rate is 4 to 5%. And what I mean by that is there's going to be some job churning. There is... Uh, individuals out there who are looking for work. Uh, right now, we can't really say that. We're, we're doing everything we can to educate um, our high schools, our, our students in college, uh, and everybody like, like that to get back into, into the workforce. Um, right now, uh, we've been taking a couple hits, especially in the Bismarck Tribune. We about, uh, hey, we need to get everybody back to work and off unemployment. Well, we only have over the last two months, three months, we've been averaging only 650 people a week on unemployment. But then we also hear, well, Phil, okay, they're not on unemployment, but they're still living off the government. Well, yeah, I think uh, Kaylee might be able to talk about this, but other, other folks in Department of Health and Human Services, our rates have never been lower on uh, temporary assistance for needy families, uh, food stamps, housing assistance, our, our rates have never been lower. So um, something to be proud of all of us there, but obviously we're, we're, worrying, we're uh, definitely work, uh, hurting a little bit in the workforce area, as, as I know all of you know. A little bit about our openings. Um, as of the end of September, we had 18,200 open uh, jobs on our website, uh, jobsnd.com. Um, I don't have to tell you, of course, healthcare is number one. Um, with that openings, 51% uh, required a high school diploma or more. 38% of those required a bachelor's degree or higher. So sometimes I think job service gets a little bit of a bad rap. All you want to carry, um, and, and nothing wrong with this, of course, we, we need workers in the food service and, and that type of hospitality industry. But I think a lot of people just think that we just have openings on our website for those industries. And quite frankly, that's that's not true. Um, our typical average wage for our, each opening is $29.37 right now. Um, so I just want to go to uh, the, the next slide here. Well, I, you know what? I'm going to stay on this slide and I, I want to share something else here that uh, Governor Burgum put it very, uh, said it very eloquently yesterday. If we took all the students graduating who are seniors in high school or are seniors uh, in college, we combine them, we combine the individuals who are being released from our DOCR facilities in the next year, 
and also those in unemployment, which, of course, I just said was very low, we still couldn't fill all the jobs uh, out in the state of North Dakota. And I do believe, even though we're seeing 18,380 jobs available on our website, I think it's well uh, above that. I think, you know, every every time we see a, an employer place a job opening with us, I'm sure that they, they would hire three or four people to go along with that one opening that they have. So I think, you know, yesterday um, the governor said we probably have close to 40,000 open jobs in the state of North Dakota, and, and I definitely um, agree with the, the, our good governor on that. Um, our next slide here is our top five occupational groups. Of course, um, these are the openings on our website that make up those 18,300 opening, uh, openings. Um, no shock, I'm sure, to all of you. Healthcare is number one. It has been that way. Um, I've been with the agency for 15 years, and healthcare has always been number one. Um, from there, it drops off to uh, office administration, transportation, and the list goes on down from there. One thing we're kind of proud of here, we started our, our own podcast uh, last year and it's called The Job Pod. So if you are, are interested in being a guest on, on that job pod, we've had about 40 podcasts and over 1600 uh, downloads. Our uh, Grand Forks uh, Workforce Center Manager, his name is Dusty Hillerbrand and he is our host for that. It's kind of a cool thing to do to be on that. Um, so if you want to talk about your facility and your needs, give me a call, uh, drop me an email, whatever it may be, and we'll definitely get you on the, the next job pod. Um, this is one question here is, um, Phil, what happened to our labor force over the last couple of years? And this is kind of a fun question to ask when I'm in a in a room or, or an auditorium, because then I, I, I go through and I say, does anybody know anybody that has retired in the last two or three years? And, and I ask them to keep their hand up. And then I say, anybody know anybody that left the workforce and opened up their own place of business? And I have a couple more hands go up. Anybody that knows somebody that um, was working two or three jobs and maybe they're only working one job now. How about somebody that's moved out of state? We've seen that happen, especially on the onset of COVID. We had uh, you know, quite a few people move out of the, the oil country in, in McKinsey and, and Wofford City area. How many people just left the workforce and went back to school? Or of course, we, you know, we've heard childcare is a huge issue in the state of North Dakota. Um, and how many parents and decided, you know what, it's just not worth it. Only one of us is gonna work. The other one's gonna stay home for the time being with, with our children. So there was another um, you know, population that left the workforce. And then of course the students, our students who are so involved in uh, after school activities, we're not seeing the students um, you know, active in the, in the workforce like what we used to. And of course the business establishments. Um, I'm here in Bismarck and it seems like every day there's another business, business opening up. Um, you know, you go up and down State Street or down by the mall, um, you know, there's three or four different or newer businesses every month. We just had, you know, it was just announced that Fleet Farms come into town. Um, we hear our, our unemployment um, director talk about the business that recently signed up for unemployment tax pay their taxes. And every week it's like 70 new businesses opened up and only 10 closed. Um, over the last 10 years, I can say that we've uh, seen an increase to over, of over 5,000 businesses here in the state of North Dakota. But really our population, yes, it's gone up 10,000, um, but those in the workforce has only in increased for about four or 5,000. So really that's, that's basically one to one and a half employee uh, per new establishment opening up. So that kind of gives you an idea of what's going on with our, our, our current labor force. Um, this one here, I'm just gonna pause for a moment. <clears throat> and like I said, back when I, I had the map up uh, showing where our workforce centers were located, um, I, I hope all of you reach out to your local workforce center. They'll work, for, work with you, work for you really, um, and, and helping you uh, get registered, uh, use our system, uh, use everything that our tools and uh, that we have available. And, you know, and don't forget also that all of our services are free. There's no charge, um, except maybe once in a while, uh, we, do, we do charge uh, for a booth at one of our, our job fairs just to cover that cost. So uh, please take a picture of that uh, if you want to and reach out to your local workforce center. So at this time, I will hand it over to Julie and Fran and they're gonna run you through our, our website, jobsnd.com. Ladies. Well, hello there. We'll go ahead and share my screen with you. Okay, can you guys see that? I feel yes. like I can only see you. So, yeah, you can see that. Okay, yes. so um, Fran, I'll let you go ahead and kick it off. All right. Um, when you go to the MD Workforce Connection and log in as an employer, this is the screen that you're going to see. 
uh, that comes up. Um, it'll have your name at the top here, um, like Julie's uh, with that. And then if you go to the uh, bottom, you know, it's it, there's a dashboard component there that you can customize, uh, you know, for appointments, calendars, uh, messages, uh, you know, different things like that um, to at a quick glance. Um, you're also able to go up into the upper left corner uh, for the menu. And this would be uh, where you would, uh, I guess mostly under the quick menu, you're probably using manage jobs and candidate search. Um, and actually, most of you should already have a registration on our website. Uh, you should check with your local uh, job service workforce center to double check that. Um, so that component would be completed as well. Uh, but the manage jobs candidate search uh, would be your main um, things that you would use. Then if you scroll to the very bottom under other services, uh, there's an assistance center link. And these are some of the things that you could use. Uh, what we're going to highlight is the quick reference card. And this, it's a really handy tool. It's a step-by-step -step, um, guide on doing different things. Okay. Um, and of course, uh, setting up a new account, like I said, check with your local workforce center to see if you've already done that. Uh, it gives you step by step on how to sign into your account uh, using the username, password, um, and then accessing menus and quick search uh, on that, which is very helpful. Um, and then you can configure your left um navigation menus uh, and that'll give you that uh, exploring your dashboard gives you information regarding that how to customize uh, that component as well and as we go further down uh managing your employer account you know if you need to change your general information if you need to add work locations uh, if you need to add other uh company uh, personnel to your account, you can do that as well uh, from that uh, aspect. Uh, then we're going to get into managing job orders. Um, and again, this is document is very helpful in creating a job order. It gives you a step by step on how to do this. Um, one good feature of job orders, and I'm sure most of you have already posted job orders, you can go in and um, copy and edit a previous job order uh, to repost it. This way you don't have to recreate everything again uh, with that. And once you do post a job, it automatically goes live uh, for job seekers to see. Um, and I guess uh, some advantages to actually listing your job orders. Um, you are given the designation of a preferred employer. When a job seeker does a job search on our website, uh, the list that comes up will have preferred employers, plus it also has spidered in jobs from other uh, sources like corporate job boards, that type of thing. By being a preferred employer, posting your jobs, your jobs will be show at the top of the list. Those will be the first things that they see uh, when they go to that. Um, also by posting on the website, we do have a carousel of highlighted employers that job seekers can seek when they go to see when they go to log in. Uh, and do their job searching uh, with that. Um, you're also able to upload your company logo uh, to your job orders so that you know, you're readily uh, recognizable 
uh, on that. Also, posting the job, you are able to upload the posting free of charge to the National Labor Exchange. Uh, this is a nationwide uh, website where people can also find your postings uh, there. Um, also, you can create application question set, you know, if you need specific skills uh, that um, you maybe want to use to uh, eliminate some people from <laughs> applying. Um, and again, copying and changing the job order. There's step by step there as well. And, um, you know, it, it's just very advantageous for you to post your job order out there. And again, if you're not sure if you're registered, uh, please contact your local job service uh, workforce center and have them check for you. Okay, we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about another service under the quick menu is managing your job candidates and applicants. And you can do a quick candidate search. And there's a couple different ways that you can do it. You can just do a quick search or if you can do an advanced. And the example that I usually share is I had a, a president call and say, hey, we're going to let go of our um, CPA. I would like to go ahead and search and see what else is in the system. And so we just did a search on CPA to see what was available. So when the time came to um, have a change, they were ready to go with some resumes and their step by step instructions how to do that. Um, there's an example of what it would look like. You'll see, um, you know, where they're looking for their name, what they expect for salaries. And of course, you can click on details and then see the full resume. And you can contact them right from this information. Once you open their resume, you can email them or you can just see their con contact information and just email them um, directly from your email as well. And there's different views. And of course, this is a great resource like Fran mentioned. It's just a nice tool that you can kind of reference when you want to use our system. Um, if you do do that search, say that gentleman did find a bunch of CPAs that were what he was looking for, he can create, save that search and create a virtual recruiter. And basically when you're done searching it, it gives you the option to save this search. And then you do that and you title it and you can tell it how often to run. And a virtual recruiter will run once a week, every day, whatever um, you select. And then you can be emailed when a new resume is posted that matches your skill set. So. Um, it's just a nice tool if you want to be out there being a little proactive and, and in that case uh, search for resumes. So it's a nice tool for you as well. So that's just a nice resource uh, on our website. And like Fran said, the first step is just to call our office and make sure that you are registered. And then it's super easy for us to get you logged in and then we can log in with you and kind of show you the system and show you some tips and tricks and go from there. So it's a great resource for you. So, Julie, just real quick, what if they're not registered with us? What what do they need to do? Then they can go ahead and get registered on our website. They'll need, um, you know, name, address, F-E-I-N is what we verify. And once the account is registered, it comes to one of us. And there are three things that we check. We check that you're registered with Secretary of State. We verify that you're registered with Workforce Safety and Insurance. And we verify that you have an unemployment insurance account. And we'll give you the resources um, to get registered with those entities. And then once you're good to go there, we will give you a call. We'll speak to you over the phone and we will enable your account. Perfect. Amy? Okay, so I'm going to talk to you in regards to all the labor market information and all of this is available through our website, jobsnd.com. So once you get to our website, um, instead of going into your logging in, finding a job, um, recruiting employers or employees, you're gonna click on labor market information and it is going to bring up some great links that I recommend you going in and looking at all of them. Um, the one that Phil pulled all of his data from regarding unemployment is the area profiles. So you can go to area profiles, you can pick whatever county you want to take a look at. Um, and once you're in there, I'm just gonna go to start because I'm really familiar with that one. We're gonna run that report. The first four pages are, are ones that you really wanna take a look at. You can look to see 
um, the unemployment rate in your area, the education level, and have it compared to where you are to North Dakota. Um, your, here's your unemployment rate for Stark County. It's at 2.1. Um, and all the job openings just in Stark County and your county are the active resumes that you can search. So that's a great tool to use when you're going to your board or anything like that. Just kind of little snippets of what you can take to show them what you're working with. Um, the, the one that I also recommend taking a look at is the employment by wage and op occupation. So this is data that is generated. It's This is data from 2021. So 2022 wages and employment will come out next year. So they get these numbers and I'm gonna do a little plug for LMI. They send out surveys every year and in order to make these numbers as accurate as possible, they have to have these surveys filled out and they're long surveys, but definitely worth it if you're looking, if you want accurate data. So this is all the data that was collected in 2021. There are a few ways that you can look at the data as far as um, if you want just to look at the report itself and it's a long document, but it will do little, you can do um, control F if you're looking for like a nursing assistant or something like that, you can do control F and it'll take you straight to um, what, what salaries are in North Dakota, Bismarck, Fargo, Grand Forks, Western North Dakota, or Eastern North Dakota. And it'll give you what they're paying by hour, by, by, by yearly, by annually. Um, you can do it that way. I prefer to utilize the dashboard I think it's a little more user friendly and they just now kind of came up with this. So like I said, it's going to show year 21. You can select the occupation here. So if we wanted to look at a nursing assistant and we wanted to know their annual or their hourly rate and we wanted to look in Western North Dakota, you can see that a nursing assistant is at $18 an hour. If you wanted to look in the eastern side, they're at 18 an hour. So pretty standard across across the board as far as wages go for a nursing assistant. If we wanted to look at a registered nurse, they're sitting at in eastern is 33 an hour and western North Dakota is at 30 an hour. So it's kind of nice to see if you're posting an opening where other places are hiring their registered nurses or their nursing assistants. You can all, I mean, you can search anything. If you needed somebody in your maintenance area, that's on there as well. So these are, these are just great resources for you guys to reach out and, and take a look at to see if you fall in line and if that's an issue as to why you're not able to hire. The other ones that people look at are the benefit guides. And I know that right now it's probably close to enrollment time. So you can click on the benefit guides and it'll kind of walk you through um, all your single medical, like what the cost is percentage of companies that offer full-time benefits for employers for vision or dental or family. So those are all great resources for you guys to kind of click around and, and see where you guys sit. So I will let Michaela tell you about job fairs. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, so I'm going to talk today about job fairs and hiring events. I'll um, show our uh, virtual platform called Easy Virtual Fair. Um, I'll do a demonstration of that. I'll go through the difference between um, job fairs versus hiring events, um, give you some examples, and then I'll also touch a little bit on um, rural outreach. So, um, so our Easy Virtual Fair platform, um, what's great about this platform is it allows you to host a event virtually. So whether that's a job fair, an event, a conference, anything like that. Um, some benefits is it's really easy to use. Um, it gives you the ability to host an event from your desk. So rather than having to be at an in-person event, you can be at your desk, you can work on things, 
um, while you're at the event. So great feature. Um, it allows you to interact with anyone anywhere. So that person can either be in your city, state, maybe they're out of state. Um, you know, it allows for that interaction. Um, it's very customizable. So all of the like flags and signs and banners that you see here can all be um, changed. You can pick the graphic that you would like to see there. Um, and it allows for a statewide event to happen in one place virtually. So I'm going to show you here what that looks like. Um, so we provide you a link and a login to set your booth up. So that's what you would want to do first. And when you log in, this is what it's going to look like. So the first thing that it's going to have you fill out is your company's information. So name, all of that good stuff, what you want your name to display. You can put in links to your website. So um, you can put in like the main website. You can put in um, a link to where you have jobs posted. You can put your company logo in here. Um, you'll put who is going to be at the actual booth itself. And then you can put social media links. And then um, you can also put a company profile. So a little bit about your company. That's what you'll set up first. And then, like I mentioned, it's very customizable. So underneath banner and posters, that's where you would select an image of what you would um, like there. Um, if you go to design, that allows you to pick the design of your booth. There's lots of different designs and um, that you can choose from with, um, again, those different graphics that you can choose to display, which is really nice. Um, in the download section here, that's where you have the ability to upload like different, like if you want to upload flyers or just more information about the company, you can do that here. Um, so like for ours, we have different brochures about job service and things like that. Um, you can do videos as well. I will say a caveat to that is it has to be published on YouTube, um, but if it is a video that is out on um, your guys' YouTube channel, you can certainly um, link it here as well. And then I'm going to go kind of skip around here. Some of these you won't see since we're an admin account. There's a little bit more options, so you won't have as many of those. But um, if you go under the offers, here's where you would post your available job so that job seekers can see that at the event. Um, and then for after the event, you can log back in here and you can check your mailbox. That'll show any messages that you would have received before and after the event or during. Um, and then you can also see who visited your booth under the visitors tab. So that's kind of nice if you needed to like connect with anybody like that. It'll show you their information here and then you can reach out at that time. All right, so then I'm gonna jump to what the event actually looks like. So when you log in, this is what it'll look like. Um, if you scroll down, you'll be able to see who's attending the event. So obviously if it's an individual event for your business, it's just gonna show your stand. Um, and it's broken down into what they call pavilions. It's just different categories. So for our virtual outreach, we just have the one pavilion. But if it was like a multi-industry or multi-employer event, it would show you like the different categories and the different employers in those pavilions. So if you want to see what your stand looks like, you would click here. Um, keep in mind, it won't say info stand. It'll say the name of your company. But here's just so you can see kind of what it looks like. And then that information that you put in when you created the booth will display here. Um, there's that company profile. Here's that um, uploaded material that you put in. If you put in any videos, it would come down right below there. So that's just that. Um, here's again where you can see the different pavilions. If they're, like I said, if there's different pavilions for the event that you're attending. Um, here's the jobs where all the jobs are posted. So again, if that's your companies or multiple companies, you can kind of see them there. So that's kind of nice. Um, something that's not on this that I will jump back to, since this isn't a live event, it doesn't show this feature here, which is the chat menu, but that's essentially how you're interacting with people in the event, right? So job seekers can message you here in the private chat, or you also have the ability to message people that are in the event. In this, you can click on visitors, and then you can message those people as well. Um, I will say that when you are in a chat with an individual, if you would like to move it to a virtual experience, like an in-person job fair would be, um, you as the employer who initiate that. So that's kind of nice. Um, you do also have the option to visit with other um, 
employers that are in attending that job fair and you would click on exhibitors it'll show you a list of exhibitors and then you can um, chat with those individuals as well if you would like all right so job fairs so for a job fair it's usually a multi-employer multi-industry event for job fairs we partner with local chamber edcs colleges schools partner agencies like Department of Corrections, um, Vocational Rehabilitation, and community agencies. Typically, since job fairs are a bigger event, we usually will rent a venue. So sometimes there is a price to pay for to rent a booth. But again, that just goes to the cost of renting that venue. Um, and then like I just showed you, uh, we can do virtual job fairs as well with our great platform, Easy Virtual Fair. So just a few examples of some of the different job fairs that the workforce centers do. Um, all workforce centers do a spring multi-industry job fair, and then there are a few that do a fall one as well. Um, some workforce centers will do an industry-specific job fair, like construction, healthcare, hospitality, um, something like that. It's a great one to participate in if you can, because um, usually there's more job seekers, the bigger the job fair. Um, some other examples of job fairs that we do, some workforce centers will do a summertime employment job fair. Um, we also do a second chance job fair. And what that is, is it's a job fair specifically for individuals or job seekers that find it a little bit harder to find employment or a little harder to employ because they're either like justice involved or they're in recovery, things like that. So um, we host a job fair called the second chance job fair. Um, like I've talked about, we do do a virtual job fair and so we do a statewide one. And our next one will be on February 8th next year in 2023. If that's something that you're interested in and would like to participate in, I encourage you to reach out to your local workforce center to get registered for that. Um, and then in Bismarck here, we do a monthly job fair here in our office, no charge, and it's called Workforce Wednesday and it's open to all employers. All right, so for hiring events, it's usually an individual um, event with one employer. Typically, it's hosted at one of our workforce centers. And because it's usually hosted there, it's free of charge. Um, and then I just want to touch a little bit on what we do to promote events. So we not only promote events that we host, but we also will promote um, job fairs or hiring events that employers are hosting on their own. Um, what we do to promote those is we'll post it on our website, our Facebook pages, um, in and around our office. Um, we'll share it with our case managers that are working with individuals that are looking for jobs and then community and partner agencies as well. And again, it's free. I feel like advertising is a huge cost when it comes to hosting an event. So it's just a service we offer. Highly encourage you to take part of it because it's completely free. All right, and then last thing I'm going to touch on is our rural outreach. Um, this is a big thing that we've really been working on here in the past year in all the local workforce centers is to really get out into those rural communities and towns so that we can provide job seeker and employer services. And like you can see here to the right, those are some of the services that we provide. Um, we also do a virtual outreach as well. It's um, the third Tuesday of each month, and it's from 1 to 3 Central Time. Um, and to see that outreach schedule, it's on our website on the home page under upcoming events. I will also drop the link to that in case you are interested in seeing the schedule of where we at, are at in each county and the time. So thank you. Hey, Michaela, I have a couple questions for you, if you don't mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So can you go back to the easy fair? Yeah. So what if a company would like to use that for their next hiring event, virtual event? Could they do that? Oh, and is sure. it free of charge? Yes, it's free of okay. charge. If it's something that an employer would like to mm -hmm. utilize as it's great, like I said, because you can do it from your desk anywhere. Um, yeah, I would just encourage, again, just to reach out to your local workforce center and we can um, definitely work on getting that set up for you. We just ask that, um, let us know at least a week in advance because it does take a little bit of time for our software developers with Easy Virtual Fair to set that up. So let's say if we had one of our healthcare providers here in the great state of North Dakota and they heard about a layoff, let's just pick a city, Bozeman, Montana, they could promote their openings and their job fair out in Bozeman 
and use our easy virtual fair platform to have that job fair and talk to those folks who are being laid off out in Bozeman, correct? Correct. Yeah, that's the great thing about this platform is it it's an opportunity to bring in people from a different state. Right. And then a little bit about our virtual job fair coming up in February. We will be looking at um, our ana data analytics from our website, jobsnd.com, and seeing where people are, are coming from out of state, just like what we did back in May. And I know Pat's going to talk a little bit about that, but that virtual job fair will not just be for our state residents, but we're going to be targeting areas across the United States where people are coming from uh, into our website. Uh, we're going to be partnering with uh, Department of Commerce and some of our other workforce partners for that. So just like what, what we did back in May, but I'll, I'll leave that one to Pat to talk about. Um, so yeah, any other questions, please put them in the chat. We haven't had had any so far, but uh, anyway, so uh, thanks, Michaela, and thanks, ladies. Um, I'll turn it over to Pat. All right, thank you, Phil. Um, and again, to echo Phil's comments earlier, I certainly appreciate everything that you guys are doing out there and wanna thank the uh, job service team for a job well done today. And to Phil's point, I've only been here eight months. I came from private industry. And uh, again, the reason I came to job service, I've been working with job service for over 20 years and super fan of what they, who they are and what they do. So um, certainly hope that this has been helpful for you today. And uh, certainly encourage you to uh, engage the team and, and learn more about some of the services we have. And I did lie a little bit about not having a presentation. I kind of put something together just real quick, if that's OK. I think I have to put it in presentation format. So let's see, I got to get back to this year. Bear with me, bear with me. There it is. OK. Can you see it or not? OK, there, here, here we go. Here we go. OK. <clears throat> so Phil now kind of alluded to the, to the virtual job fair. So I'm like super pumped about this. And um, in May, uh, Phil and his team were able to get 160 employers into this job fair. And we were completely blown away by just the response that we got. We had job seekers from 20 states and six countries. And obviously sharing some of our uh, platform and what that looks like, certainly hope that you guys will engage on this. But the other reason I wanted to talk about this, I serve on Governor Burgum's cabinet. And one of my strategies, our strategy at Job Service is to align with other agencies. So we're working with uh, Jeb from Game and Fish, Cody from Parks and Rec, Josh and his team at Department of Commerce, Tourism and that type of stuff. So we're engaging other agencies to help us come, um, help us sell North Dakota. Um, so they've been just very gracious and, and supportive of that. So we'll continue with that um, platform as we go on. Um, I also just wanted to kind of just throw a plug in kind of strategically what we're doing behind the scenes to support all of you in the healthcare industry. And this is not an aesthetic slide because I blew up the one slide just to uh, promote the healthcare industry, but we're working with an organization called Be More Colorful Virtual Reality. We're working with uh, healthcare industry to create these experiences so that we can take these experiences in a virtual reality platform into our schools, into our communities, working with our WIOA programs, people who are looking to change careers, that type of stuff. So we're certainly supporting the healthcare industry from that um, aspect as well. And we're super excited about it. And some of these experiences that we're creating, we know that we've got HIPAA rules, all that other type of stuff, but we're able to work with uh, some of the healthcare industries out there to kind of stage some of these events, but still uh, promote the industry and, and generate that curiosity that we're looking forward to hopefully retain uh, our students in the great state of North Dakota. I also kind of wanted to promote the Find a Good Life program. If you see up in the top right corner, it does not say job service. It says Department of Commerce. Uh, we are aligned with them on this program. Uh, they have very minimal funding to kind of promote this program, but we're having significant results. Uh, currently to date, they have over 750 people in the pipeline. 75% of those people are willing to move to North Dakota in the next six months. Those 750 people represent 47 states and 20 countries. So there is a definite interest in the state of North Dakota and there's kind of somewhat of a concierge service. I encourage you guys to, uh, you know, take a picture of that slide. You got Jana who's running the program there, but I'm just going to be blunt and honest with all of you. I'd love to see some community partners or community champions that represent the healthcare industry. So as you're recruiting people to your communities or as this pipeline fills, and people are selecting your community to come take a look at. We certainly understand that community making them feel welcome, special, important, needed and wanted is part of the solution. So I'd encourage you guys to get people into that community champion um, platform or I guess role. 
And part of the reason that I su super support this program is that many of our job service people are serving as community champions. And we are kind of taking these leads and connecting them to employers, which we hope will be uh, many of you. So hopefully that made sense. Um, <clears throat> I kind of want to throw this out. I'm kind of speaking around the state and this is gonna just throwing this out there to provoke thought, but this is Macy France. And I did a presentation recently in Watford City and I had Macy sitting on the call. And I asked everybody in Watford City Economic Development, there's 20 people there. I uh, was there with Department of Commerce. Um, they were promoting the Find a Good Life program, but I asked everybody in the room, how many knew Macy France? And they all raised their hand. And then I said, how many of you know that she's going to University of North Dakota to pursue a career in the mental health field? And maybe one or two knew that. And I said to them, I said, I'm just kind of throwing this out because we've spent all this time watching Macy grow up in Watford City and I'm from Watford City, just moved to Bismarck in April. But, you know, we connected Macy to the executive director of Silver Creek Recovery Center at the time. Macy's been involved in inspiring our youth, you know, working with uh, Ron Nest from the Petroleum Council, supporting the industry and her community, going to Medora to learn how to be a better human being and how to create great experiences. But yet we don't know where she's going to school or what she's pursuing. And so my message to communities was, number one, we should probably pay a little closer attention to where these students are going and what fields that they're pursuing so that we can say one thing to them, we want you back. And so I also think that we have opportunity with our graduating seniors to actually ask them to bring people back to their communities to help be the solution and bringing people back to their communities. So I wanted to just share that with you. Um, another part of my outreach that I just kind of wanted to explain to you too and how we're uh, trying to also support the healthcare industry, but this is an example of going into Ward County and I had economic development there, many community leaders, senators, all that type of stuff. But basically what I'm telling them is that in my opinion, healthcare is not a health, the shortage there is not a healthcare problem, it's a community problem. And so what I'm really encouraging communities to do is to find a way to educate their residents in their community about the openings in their community. And my suggestion to them was to focus on the top five occupations. And so my message to Ward County, for example, is you have 263 healthcare positions open in your community. Can you just educate your community about those openings? And if they should have anybody in their sphere of influence, their networks, their social media, all that stuff, they're in that healthcare industry, invite them to join the Find the Good Life program. They don't have to make any commitments, um, but get them into the program. Somebody's gonna call them, say, where do you wanna go? I wanna go to Minot. Why do you wanna go to Minot? My sister's there and she told me to at least check it out. I, I would like to see communities get way more involved with referring people to the program and, and really being part of the solution. And where does this concept come from? I grew up in McKenzie County over the last 10 years, the fastest growing county in the nation. And the fastest growing county in the nation, did that mean that everybody was a great recruiter? No, it meant that somebody came out, took a chance, picked up the phone and started calling their friends and neighbors and saying, get out here. North Dakota is real, it's an amazing place. So that's the concept behind that. So that's how we're trying to support the healthcare industry as well. Um, and again, kind of going out to these different communities, you can see that we're meeting with senators, we're meeting with local leaders and stuff, and just trying to get that concept out there to get their communities off the bench to be a part of the solution. That top left picture, that is a, a new person from Washington that joined the Find the Good Life program. He was so moved by the concierge service that he moved to Minot, North Dakota before he had a job. Again, he connected with our team at Job Service in Minot. He had four interviews that first week. He's hired on day three. He's an IT professional and he's elated and excited and having an amazing experience. So that was just kind of a finished product example. And then the last thing, you know, I am big on referrals. Um, I like to share this story here because these two are from Missoula, Montana. And how did they get to Watford City? They were one of the last couples that I was able to work for or work with prior to coming out here. Um, Jess had actually uh, toured the McKenzie County uh, Hospital. She's a pharmacist. And when I was working with him, I said, how did you even find out about Watford City? Well, it turns out that Zach was a little wrestler in the state of Nevada and he had a wrestling coach and that wrestling coach's name is Kurt Moen. Kurt Moen is from Watford City. He moved back to take over the family farm and he picked up the phone and he called Zach and said, get out here and take a look at this. Zach just finished getting through the police academy. He's now a police officer in Watford City and his wife is a PhD in pharmacy from the University of Montana. They're no longer living in, in Missoula, Montana. They're now called Watford City home, but it's because somebody engaged them, invited them and inspired them. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Phil. All right, thanks, Pat.
appreciate that. Always your message is inspiring to us all. So thank you. Um, any questions out there? I have a little bit of time left. Um, Keely, any uh, words from you? Parting words? I guess I, if I could, I'd like to thank Kaylee. Uh, Kaylee, I, uh, Phil and I are very active on the Workforce Council, and I, I actually spearhead the Recruiting and Retention Committee, and Kaylee is on uh, my subcommittee. She's done a fantastic job and obviously very instrumental in pulling this call off today. So, Kaylee, I just wanted to shout out to you and say thank you for uh, uh, creating impact and aligning with us, and I quote, and Kelly is a part of that as well, too. So, certainly appreciate your guys' collaboration and your partnership to uh, work together to solve the workforce shortages. It was my pleasure and I'm glad we could connect and make this happen and I hope folks on the call can can use job service and the tools that they have to offer. Um, they're a great team to work with so don't you know, feel um, you know reach out to them with any questions you may have and hopefully now you have some more tools in your toolbox um, that you can help in some of your recruitment efforts. Um, otherwise that's all we have for you guys today. Thank you so much. This meeting will be recorded and will be streamed on YouTube for those that won't be able to join as well. So Thanks again. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. Thanks, everybody.